Welcome back guys to episode 2 of the 4B11T build. Today we're going to be putting the rings on the pistons and then putting the pistons in the block. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to put one set of piston rings on. Alright guys, we're going to start by putting the oil expander on. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that the heads butt together like that and not like this. They don't really go together like that so it's pretty easy. And according to the diagram here, where you can see this and pause it if you need to. It's going to go towards the bottom of the piston. Just like that. And you can see the ends butt together. Now what you want to do is grab your oil expander rings. And according to the diagram, put them 90 degrees off. Try to just roll them in. bottom one's a little more tricky because you got to get past the first two. As you can see, gap number one, gap number two, and then finally our third gap, which is probably going to be impossible to see, is somewhere down in there. Next, you're going to grab your second compression ring and a ring expander because these are a little brittle. You don't want to be rolling them on, just like that. This one goes towards the front of the piston. Just like that. Then you're gonna grab your number one ring. Make sure that the lettering, for these ones, the Y's go, it goes up tool. I'm just going to want to finesse it into place. Boom. Just like that. All right. We'll be right back and I'm going to show you how to put them in the piston. All right. Now that we're ready to put the pistons into the cylinder, got the rings on, grab your favorite assembly lube again. Nice healthy size dot right in there. Just like before, massage it in. Now you can pick up one of these things from Weissco themselves, 86 millimeter for the 4B11T or whatever you have. And then you're gonna wanna line the dot on the top of the piston towards the front of the engine, which is this side. So what you do is you put this over the cylinder. Then you just fish it down in there. And what that will do is it's tapered so it'll compress the rings for you so you don't have to get a ratchet ratcheting piston ring compression tool i'm going to reach up the bottom and make sure that the rod doesn't hit the crank now that we have the piston almost all the way in it's getting a little tough to push so i'm just going to use the bottom of a rubber mallet to get us the rest of the way like that it's installed now we can flip the motor over or on its side and we can bring the connecting rod to meet the crank okay now we're gonna prep the cap and we're just gonna go ahead and put more lube on more of the merrier And you're going to want to line up these little tangs with the tangs that are on here. And in this case, it's on the bottom. There it is right there. So we're just going to go ahead and place that on. Like so. And before we forget, we need to dress the bolt with some ARP lube. Hand tight for now, and then we can torque it down to 55 foot pounds. All right, guys, we're gonna torque this down to 55 foot pounds. Uh, I'm gonna try to do it as even as I can between the two, since they're already hand snug. We can just do one. So 
one light, two lights, three lights. That's torqued. That's torqued. Double check. It'll work. All right, now that the first one's installed, we can give it a quick spin to make sure everything's going smooth. All right, now that they're all torqued down to 55 foot pounds, make sure to alternate between bolts to keep it even. Now you're just going to last step is to crank it over once again and make sure that your pistons and your oil squirters do not interfere. Looking good. That looks perfect. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode when we put the lower girdle on. Have a great one.